You don't have to come up here. Or there. Okay. Just a little thing. Thank you. Yeah. I, I didn't realize it would make you do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, because I usually I'd be all the way over there and to say, oh, recording now and leave a window over. So I'd have right. to come over. No big deal. That it's good for you to know that. It is good to know. Like I don't always know what the that side of it is. Yeah. We'll see. Let's see if I want to do some music. Hi, Peggy. Good morning. Is Caitlin still coming or doing Zoom? She comes. Um, I haven't seen her in a while, actually. Oh. Yeah. But Annie does. Huh? I haven't seen Annie. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, she does Jenny's class. Yeah. Good. Yeah. She's still doing. It. Yeah, she loves her intensity. I've been subbing for. I was subbing for Jenny quite a bit. Good. When she was husband, but after I broke my arm. Right. I'm still not doing handstands. I'm still kind of baby oh, because now I'm still yeah. a plate in it, screws. Oh, and that was major. Was major. On your vacation. On your vacation. And then I had to hike two miles out with a broken arm. Wow. Did you just slip and fall? I just so quick, boom. And I went into my hand went into like a gully of rocks. Oh. So there was no room for it to hit flat. I just bent. bent it right up. Oh god. And on every bone fall. And you knew. I broke Oh God! Ooh, Did you, were you in shock? Or, luckily, it's not adrenaline. Yeah, yeah I felt uh, shocky and nauseated at first. You know, I was shocky, and then my husband got a water bottle and splint it and wrapped it, and I put it up on my head and I said, "Let's go! Let's get back out of here!" And I, I wanted to jog. He says he was hanging onto my belt because I wanted to run and get home. <laughs> yeah, you know, I had all that adrenaline. Yeah, for you too. so I got to the jeep, and then we had to drive. Uh, 40 minutes in the Jeep to get to an emergency room. Oh, wow. Were you in Zion? Where were you? No, we haven't hit Zion yet. Okay. That was the next stop. Oh. We were in, um, I can't remember the name of the gulch, um, where we were hiking yeah. and through the water and That's up the rocks. Yeah. You know, was, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Hard when you're like, don't even know where the nearest hospital is. Right. I mean, that's, we did know. they just have to set it or did they have to set well, it? They, and she she replaced she said it, she reduced it you call it uh -huh. and pulled it out got the bone lined yeah. up mm -hmm. and then I had to schedule su surgery so I had surgery in Arizona I broke it I broke it in Arizona and I had surgery in Utah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you just have to trust the surgeons. You're just and like I had the best surgeon there was. I felt really good with him. Good. It was a huge, beautiful hospital. Okay, good. Um, so it was, it was okay. Karen's a nurse. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a nurse as well. Oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so, oh, well, okay. Oh, <laughs> so I really get. Yeah. yeah. The critique, though. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. We ready for some yoga? We can chat. I like chatting too. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's nice to catch up. I'll turn some music on. Any special requests today? Are you able to do? Yeah, I'm trying to run this and stuff. Are you modifying? Still? I'm kind of modifying. I do a lot of uh, forearms, forearms, but okay. I'm, I'm, I need to. I'm just babying this. So yeah. Okay. I haven't put all my weight on it. I mean, I can do down dog and stuff. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. <laughs> yeah. You take care of yourself. Oh, I do. I will. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's start seated this morning. So just finding a comfortable seat. If you want to be up on a block, you can. I do have an extra block if you'd like one. We're just gonna find a seat wherever you want to be. You can have your legs in whatever shape they're in. Just sitting up nice and tall, yeah, knee bent. However, I wonder if sitting up on a block might help with that. Or I'm sitting on a on a blanket. blanket. It yeah. Might give you a little like extra. A Let's just see. I know with my knee that always helps. So right here, closing down the eyes if you're comfortable doing that. And the truth is we all come to the mat with our stories. We all have our, our history in the cells of our body. And then just, I'm so proud of you all for showing up anyway, just as you are and know that your mat is a safe place to move from your intuition. I'll guide you, but my words are suggestions. Just 
take a moment to feel and honor to your body in this moment, just where you are. Do any neck circles or neck rolls or movement, you're welcome to add that in right here. If you'd like to just sit and breathe, focus on your breathing, that's fine too. One more breaths. You're moving with, through the neck. Just be sure to hit all parts. We're bringing the head back into alignment and pause. And gently flutter your eyes open. We'll do a few big shoulder circles. So shoulders will go up, back, and down. Circling. Go the opposite direction. Or you can do one at a time. Good morning, Darian. <laughs> and then take the shoulders all the way up and then let them drop. All the way up, let them drop. One more time, shoulders up and let them drop. And then take the arms out in front of you. I'm gonna take the palms up and then rotate the palms down and then rotate the palms up and rotate them down, that internal rotation. And then bring them to face each other. Actually, that's not true. Let's bring them down. You're gonna take the right hand. You're gonna lead from the pinky finger. You're gonna go all the way up towards the ceiling and straight back behind you as far as it'll go. And then bring it back up and around to the front. These are called swimmers. So from the pinky finger all the way up and back, rotating through that thoracic spine and then bring it back up to the ceiling and back to the center. Let's do that again. From the pinky finger, reach as high as you can, up and back <laughs> and then bring it back around. Good. One more time. Take that left arm, big stretch, little twist to the left, and then bring it all the way back around. So we'll do it one more, but this time we'll pause. So take that right arm all the way up and around to the floor behind you. Bring your left hand to your right thigh. Take a twist. Good, good, Peggy. Inhale, lift, exhale, twist. One more breath. And then slowly unwind back to center, arms out, palms down. Take that left pinky finger, let it lead you all the way up and around and just into the left. Left hand to the floor, if it reaches, fingertips are fine. Right hand to the outer left knee if that's comfortable. Inhale, lift, exhale, revolver twist. No, no, save more breath. No. Slowly unwind, come back to center. And then right here, she's got like three dogs around her. So. <laughs> okay, make fits. I know she's like, hey. And you're going to bring the back of your fists together and just start to roll gently out the wrists. You could do a big full circle or you can do half circles. Okay, I know you made me, but. <laughs> She's doing it on top of her little her lab. <laughs> Not her lap, her lap. Okay, yeah. bring your palms together. And then you're going to bring the hands down and then point the fingers down, pressing the palms together, and then bring them back up. So you're just going to do that little rotation. Point down and bring it back up. One more time. Point it down 
and then bring it back up and pause there and then slide the hands to one side, press the elbow points forward and palms together. Go into the forearms, take a breath. <laughs> then slide it through to the other side, elbows press forward, going into the forearms and the wrists. Soften the shoulders or draw them down. Go. And come back to center one more time. Circle this time, hands open. So just circling. You can go all the way around. Good. One more big circle. And then you can make some fists and open a few times. Or shake out the wrists. The wrists allow that. What's the matter with you? Good job. And then we'll come forward to tabletop. Yeah. Not pat under the knees as you need. I'm just going to hit the mute. And you'll move through a few rounds of cow and cat stretches. So pressing the palms down into the floor and arching that back like a cat. And then sinking the chest and lifting up. And you can go quickly or you can go slowly. And pressing into the length of your fingers. Warming up all those little muscles and the wrists and forearms, all the way up into the shoulders, upper back. And take one more round. Then come to neutral and bring your forearms down to the mat. You'll be on your elbows and you want your forearms parallel with each other. And then walk your knees back and start to melt the chest back coming into puppy pose. Try to really keep the forearms parallel. And the forehead might rest at the floor. There should be like an edge of discomfort here. It's not like a child's pose. A little more intentional through the shoulders. Try to keep the forearms parallel and palms pressing down. One more breath, just let the breath slide under the shoulders, along the side of the body. And then you'll gently lift up, walk your hands all the way back towards the knees, tuck your toes under and press up to your feet at the back of your mat. So you're coming up into a forward fold at the back of the mat. You can take rag doll, holding opposite elbow with opposite hand. Maybe your rag doll is swaying, or maybe it's still. Softly release the hands to the mat. And then if you can, you're going to walk it forward into your first downward dog. So you start to crawl forward on the mat. It's okay to set the knees down if you need. Come into that first downward facing dog of this class. Doesn't mean it's the first one of your day. <laughs> and then you can pedal the legs out. We'll move the hips gently side to side. Bring the uh, feet a little closer together and take your left leg up to the sky. You'll bend the left knee and roll open through that left hip. Try to stay square through the arms and shoulders ish. And then stretch the leg long, and then you're going to curl the knee into the nose. So come forward, curl it in, and just hold that for three. Really strong through the arms for two. Lift a little higher, lift up between the shoulder blades, and then set the knee gently down to the ground. Good. Now step the right foot forward. 
and come up into a low lunge if you can. If you can be on that back knee, keep the knee down a lot. If you can't, if it's better to lift it, which knee was it that hurts? Left. Okay. It's, it's okay. Okay. So it's you can knee heel. Okay. So keeping that foot really grounded, that back toe is maybe pointed or tucked is fine. That's fine. Good. And then take the left arm up. And you're going to either press the right forearm into the right thigh or right arm can reach down and you lean to the right slightly to open up the left hip flexor. So lengthen through the tailbone, in through the belly. Good, nice, Karen. Breathe, good, Darian. Find that center line, hug into center. And then come back to center, take both arms up, just stretch up, maybe even look up to the ceiling. And bring the hands down to frame the right foot. Now tuck the back toes under, lift that back thigh, and pause in this low lunge. And then right here, the left hand can be on a block or on the floor. You'll plant the left hand and then revolve to the right. A little twist. I'm feeling kind of like that swimmer reached back behind you. Good. Open up across the collarbones, the front of the chest. Keep really grounded through both legs. Take one more breath here. And then set the right hand down. We'll step the right foot back, coming into a high plank. And then however you need, I'm gonna lower down onto the belly. And be knees first. Good. And then three times we'll come up into cobra. Point the toes and press into the palms. Hands can be close in or farther apart. And lower down, just moving your own breath. Come on up to Cobra. As high as feels safe and good in your own, own body. And lower down. And one more time, rising up to Cobra. Putting on the suppleness of the spine. And then come on down, tuck the toes, press up to plank and back to downward facing dog. And bring the feet closer together. Stretch the right leg to the sky, bend the right knee, open it up. Extend the leg long and then knee to nose. It's one time you curl and hold, push the floor away, pull the belly in, really curl into that spine for a three, for a two, hold it. And then set the right knee and chin down, step the left leg forward. Come on up, low lunge. And it's a shorter stance, so like 90-90. Take the right arm up, left forearm to left thigh, a little lean left. Root down through both feet, back shin, left foot. Breathe into that right side of the waist and body. The left arm can reach down if you'd like. And keep neutral through the pelvis. There's a hugging into center line. And then the torso goes off center to create that stretch without lengthening. One more breath. Bring it back to both arms. Go straight up, look up into your core body. And then set the hands down, tuck the back toes under, lift that back leg, make any adjustments in your stance that you need. Get long and then plant the right hand and then twist to the left. Reach that left arm up towards the ceiling, falling through the rib cage. Use the block if you need. Squeeze both inner thighs towards the center line. So the hips are going to want to go off to the left. Try to squeeze them in. Good color. And breathe for three, two. Stay for the exhale. Then hands to the mat. And step back, high plank, or it can be kneeling in your own way, lower down the belly. And take three cobras again, and pressing down to go up and lower down. Be as big or as little in your body as feels okay. Maybe you're staying super low, working strength in the upper back. One more time. Good. And then you'll make your way back to downward facing dog or child's pose <laughs> or 
take your long sleeve shirt off, awesome. <laughs> And a nice deep breath in. Breathe out. And then looking forward, you can walk or hop your feet up to your hands. Nice job. Halfway lift. Exhale, forward bow. Chair pose. Everyone's favorite. We wait for chair, okay? <laughs> Spread the toes. Feet can be together or slightly apart. To hold this one really focusing on where your attention is in your feet. So it's like, are you pressing more into one leg because you're favoring? What happens if you shift to the other? Where are you on your feet? Are you on the back or front? It's happening through the pelvis and the abdominal muscles. You lengthen the sides of the waist, reach to the fingers a little more. So we take one more breath here, inhale, and exhale, forward fold, diving down. Inhale, halfway lift, and through vinyasa, high plank to lower, or your own variation is fine. Or an upward dog, or cobra, downward facing dog. Stretch the left leg to the sky again. Bend the knee, open that hip. Straighten the leg, curl in, knee to nose. And then just stay there and move the left leg left to right like a windshield wiper from elbow to elbow for five, four, three, two, and one. Set it down. Step the right leg forward. <laughs> I know I'm just. But it's a brain class. Tuck the left toes under, lift to that runner's lunge. And then crescent lunge. Come on up, balancing. <laughs> it's okay if the back foot wants to be flat. That feels better. It's okay to bend the back knee slightly. Sometimes that gets you more into the quadricep. The flexor. And the squishy mat can be tricky with balance, but yeah. it's good. Your subtle little muscle for this tone. Okay, good. Bring your hands to your heart. We're going to take a twist again. This time, left elbow goes to the outside of the right knee. And then the palms press as you begin to revolve. At any time, you can straighten the arms. Sometimes it's by default. <laughs> left arm for support at the floor or on a block. You got it. Let's come up to warrior two. Good, nice placement of the feet. So left foot spins flat and open up. Right knee stays bent. Right toes turn forward. You get that little challenge of the lift and the little squeeze of that to step over. And then just find that tug of war through the arms. Really find that center. You feel really stacked. Crown of the head right over the pelvis. And then flip the left palm up, reverse your warrior, take it back. A little lean back, but mostly lift up as we move the core muscles. And then bring it forward, side angle, right forearm to thigh, left arm to the sky. And if you want to go deeper, the right hand can come down to the ankle or block of the floor anytime. Fine. <laughs> Take one more breath. And then look down, bring your hands to the mat, step it back to high plank. Now, um, set the knees down for a moment and come down onto your forearms. Good. And then lift the knees back up. So, forearm plank. And then bring the feet together in forearm plank. And then if you can, you're gonna spin the heels to the left, stacking the right leg on top, and maybe opening to the right, right arm to the sky. 
And the left forearm can go across the mat if it's too much in a straight line. That feels like too much. Really strengthening all the little muscles in your whole body. Big muscles too. Good for three, hold it. Breathing two. And then one, nice job. Come back to your forearms, lower your pelvis to the mat, sphinx pose. Stretching, lengthening the sides of the body. And then lower it down, slide the hands back under the shoulders and you'll press back to downward dog. Go up to plank or the knees and then downward dog. Good, stretch the right leg up to the sky. Bend the knee, roll the hip open for a moment. And straighten the leg, curl the knee into the nose, come forward and then move the right knee right to left, like you could touch right elbow, left elbow, right elbow, left elbow. Yeah, see, you come that far forward for three, you got it, two, and one, and then set the shin to the ground, set the knee down, then left leg comes forward, then right toes tuck, and you lift, and come up into crescent lunge, Good. or warrior one spine, that's fine. And breathe. Maybe a little bend in the back knee if you can. But if it's too much on the foot or ankle, it's okay to have that foot flat. Good. Bring your hands to your heart. Lean forward and hook the right elbow to the left knee. Right. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. And then you can open the arms so the right hand can come down to the floor or block inside or outside the left foot. Remembering my words are suggestive. Feel into your body. Good, and then warrior two, you'll find your way up and around. Get grounded through the, from the pelvis down to both feet. Band from the center of the chest out through both arms. And then flip your left palm up, reverse your warrior, go up. Lift your fingertips up towards the ceiling. And then bring it forward for a side angle. You can have forearm on thigh, left forearm to left thigh, or you can reach the left hand a little deeper towards the ground or ankle or block. One more breath here. And then set the hands down. You'll step back to a high plank. And then forearm plank. You can lower the legs, knees first if you need. And then feet together, spin the heels to the right. And then left arm to the high. Or you can have your fingertips on the floor. You can take the forearm across the mat to the left. To get a little more stable base or challenge yourself and be all in one line. Check in with your feet, flex the feet, pull the pinky toes back on both feet, pull the pit of the belly in. Good, and then forearm plank, set the pelvis carefully down, sphinx pose. And then rib cage forward, pull the head of the shoulders back, chin back. And then lower down, bring the hands under the shoulders, tuck the toes, press up to plank, downward facing dog. And pedal it out. My mat was slipping. I made it slippery. Oh no! I made it slippy. Oh, that's so challenging. <laughs> I washed mine and smelled like it. 
All right, lift your heels, tiptoe your feet, and draw. That's a good job Watch, washing your mat. <laughs> Bring your feet to hip width distance apart. Catch your big toes with your crease fingers. Halfway lift, and then forward fold. Stay or take the palms of the hands and slide them under the soles of the feet for gorilla. Halfway lift and forward bow. the feet, release the hands from under the feet. We're going to come all the way down to seated on your mat. Come down and sit and straighten the legs. We're going to do a little bit of quad strengthening here. So we're going to sit up nice and tall, hands by your side. It's called Dandasana. You want to pull the thigh muscles up. So it's like kneecap straw up. Good, sit up nice and tall. So the tendency with this one is you're gonna to wanna to lean back. Try not to lean back and try to stay upright. So you're just gonna lift the right leg. It's gonna lift and lower. Foot can be flexed or pointed. It's really up to you. Lift and lower, I know. So be just cream, which is what's gonna happen. So it's especially if you don't lean back. So we're just staying on the right leg, just the right leg. Just lift and lower. And even if it's just squeezing it and holding, and not lifting, see if you can do that. So these are knee strengtheners without putting weight on the knee. <laughs> so, yeah, so try to stay just on that right leg, still just on that right leg. I know I see lots of cramps happening. Everyone's shaking the legs. Okay, good. Set it down, shake it up. So we're trying for 10 lifts just on one leg. So sit up really tall again, and then hug muscle to bone. And it might just be in, in barely lift and lower. That might be better. That's just those really, those deep muscles that closest to the bone. These are our good endurance muscles, or you can get a little higher, which is more hip flexor. And deep core, trying not to sit back, not to lean back. I know it's intense. You got this. Last three, it's shocking. Yeah. Two. And then when you say it, really do it. You're like, wait, wait, this is way easier. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to let you do that for this next one. So shake it out real quick. We'll do another set. This time you're going to come down onto your forearms behind you. Okay. Now grip muscle to bone on that right leg and then see if you can lift it for 10, nine. You can take it up high if you like, eight or stay low, really focusing, looking at that leg. You want muscle to bone. I lost count. Two. <laughs> okay, one. <laughs> Let's try the other leg. So press out all the way through the sole of the foot. All everything is hugging to bone. So you're trying to get to those deep, deep muscles close to the bone. So good for strengthening the joints. This is hip joint, knee joint. <laughs> we did a lot of ankle joint already with the balancing on that back ball of the foot for three. Two, this is core work right here, too. <laughs> and one. Good. And then press yourself up, shake out the legs. Let's bring the feet together for a quick release. You can lift up here if you like. We're not quite done yet. And then pull forward. Soften your jaw, the back of your neck, back of the shoulders, heel into the hips, the slack right there, and the hip flexor. And then we'll come on back up, stretch the legs out long again. So this next one, um, it's similar. So we'll try sitting. So now you know, if this isn't working, it's okay to come here and do these from here. So we're gonna go up and over. So here's a little bit more intense, but you can also be on your forearms. So we'll do just the right leg and you're gonna do like an upside down U shape. You might even bring a block there. I rec I'd say go on the high and see if you can go up and over. But if you can't do that, you can be on a lower and go sideways so it's a little smaller. 
Yeah, so let's just try that. So we're gonna try for, for 10. So try for, which is like 20. So 10. Yeah, and it's okay to be down here. This is a little bit, right? Yeah. Yes, your hands can be for support. So I know it's really trippy. So when I, um, I used to go to the gym a lot and then I had some knee issues. I, I hurt my knee when I was 12 and then again at 20 and I broke my tibia and I had all this knee trauma on the right. And um, I thought well, I'm gonna have to have a knee replacement in my thirties. And a trainer taught me these and I've never, I haven't had them. And every once in a while, it'll feel unstable and sore and I do these and it takes care of it because it's not putting weight on the foot. So I can't tweak yes. the joint. It's just strengthening all those little muscles. It's not easy. Okay, come back to center. Shake it out. You get to try the other side. So it's core, hip flexors, and then all those little muscles as close to the bone as you can. So squeeze, hug muscle to bone. Let's try that left leg. So this is where we would normally be doing balancing. We're doing this in place of balancing today. Try for 10 if you can, sitting up really tall. This is also, it's called the mobility work. So it's working with the um, range of motion without helping it, right? It's seeing where you can go. Shocking, right, Karen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like I see where my limitations are. Shake it out. Yeah. And then let's bring the feet together again. That body can also know when you're ready. There's no hurry for it. You can walk the sitting bones back. Bow forward. Relax the shoulders, neck, face, and jaw. Yeah, report back to me how you feel. <laughs> Okay, come up slowly, and then we'll bring the knees together. And then since we're sitting, let's take a boat pose. So bring knees and ankles together. So I'm gonna do a little bit different version. So feet will stay on the ground the whole time. Knees and ankles press together, really sweet. And then arms come out in front, tuck your chin slightly, and just rock back till you feel the core body engage. And then notice if the legs have relaxed and press them together again. So squeeze ankles together, knees together, just hold. Yeah, and then you can do little tiny pulses for 10, nine, eight, squeeze the knees and ankles, seven, six, pull the belly in, five. Try to scoop the tailbone up. You're in like a, a C curve in that lower spine. Three, two, one, rock it back, hold it, just hold it for 10. Nine, squeeze in. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Come on up. You're gonna make your way onto your hands and knees, however you wanna get there. Move through a few rounds of cow and cat, kick knees to kind of stretch out the abdomen and the low back. And come back to neutral. Take your hands forward about one hand length. Tuck the toes downward facing dog. You can pedal it out. Bring the hips gently side to side. We'll keep with that same pattern we've been doing. Take the left leg up first. Bend the knee. Open the hip. Let that feel good right there. Opening the hip flexor in the front of the quad. And then stretch the leg long, curl in, knee to nose. We aren't going to hold it though. Set the shin down. And then the right foot comes around. <laughs> Tuck the left toes under, lift to a lunge. And then spin the left foot flat for warrior two. The left arm will come up there. Root it through the feet. Maybe you're feeling the quad still right here. It's a good thing. <laughs> And then straighten your right leg for a triangle. That's tricky on a slippery mat, but do your best. 
So the right hand can come to the shin or maybe it's on a block or chair. Yeah, nice. Open up through that left arm and shoulder. Rooted through your feet, press into the big toe mound, pinky toe mound, and center of both heels. Every pose starts at the feet. Good. Let the left arm now pull you up to stand. Turn your feet to parallel. Hands tuck into the hips. And you'll dive forward in a wide leg forward fold. So hinging. Bringing your hands down to the floor or wherever they want to land. If you prefer them interlaced behind your head or your back or holding ankles, that's fine. And maybe you're focusing on strengthening the knees still. So to do that here, you can bend the knees a little bit, create some slack. And then try to straighten by pressing the hips up and lift the kneecaps up. So quadriceps engage. And the more the quadriceps squeeze isometrically, the more the hamstrings will open the backs of the legs. You can play with that. If it feels too intense, you just soften the knees again. Those isometric contractions are so good for creating deep strength. Good. Lift to a flat back now. Bring your hands to your hips and come up to stand. And then turn the right toes forward. You'll step the left foot in and up slightly. Uh, make fists with your hands and then fit the knuckles together behind you. Press them into each other. And then square your body towards your right foot. So square towards me, Paulette. Step your left foot to the left a little. Yeah, good. And then both legs are straightish. As you fold forward, you keep pressing the knuckles together behind your back. There's some nice rotator cuff opening. Press the knuckles together. It's an internal rotation of the upper arm bone. Scissoring the legs a bit, like you're trying to pull the right foot back and the left foot forward in a way. <laughs> Hold it and breathe. Good, release the hands to the mat. Take a breath, just pause. And then make your way through vinyasa. Step it back, high plank, low plank, or skip it if you'd like to skip it. Upward facing dog, maybe cobra, downward facing dog. Good. Lift the right leg to the sky, bend the right knee, open up that right hip. Stretch the leg long. Curl it in and set the right knee down, right shin down. Step the left foot forward. Tuck the right toes, lift to a lunge. Right foot spins flat, warrior two. Mm -hmm. Finding hair falling off of me. It's time for a hair wash. <laughs> All right, straighten your left leg and then hinge into triangle. Good. Wonderful pose for strengthening the ankles, the core, stretching the hamstrings, and just turning in a different plane of our normal movement patterns. So it's wonderful for surprising the body. <laughs> Let the right arm now pull you up. Bring your feet to parallel. And you can interlace your hands behind you if you like, dropping the shoulder heads back, and then go ahead and hinge forward. You might bend the knees on the way down. And then once you're there, maybe you play with hugging muscle to bone. Try to straighten the legs, press the hip bones up and squeeze the front of the thighs.
Release the hands softly to the mat. Lift to the flat back. Bring your hands to your hips and come on up to stand. And then turn the left toes to face forward. Step the right foot in into the right slightly. Make this again. Fit your knuckles together like a puzzle behind you. Pull the shoulders back. Lift up and fold over your left leg. I'm slow moving when it comes to hamstrings. I don't like to go quickly like to really feel in like there's a breaking <laughs> sensation using your brakes. Press the knuckles together, really create this like dynamic stretch in the shoulders. Good, Peggy. And then release the hands softly to the mat. Pause, just take a breath. And then stepping back, high plank. This is our last one. Vinyasa, low plank. Upward facing or cobra. And downward facing dog. We're just gonna stay here for a moment. Just get the wonderful effects of this inversion. Spread your fingers. And then you're going to walk your feet up towards your hands, sit down on your mat, and lay down onto your back. And if you have a block, bring it. And if you don't have a block, Darian, do you have a block? Um, do you have a, a towel or a blanket you can roll up? And you can do this without it too. It's just a suggestion. So if you have a block with you, you're going to lay down on your back, feet flat, and slide the block under. And if you don't have a block, you'll put a towel or maybe a thick book or a towel or blanket. You'll just roll it up perfect area and it goes right under the pelvis. So yeah, this is a nice release for those hips, hip flexors, and lower back now. I'm just going to stay and I'm turning the fluorescence off. That's great. If you want, while you're there, you can straighten your leg. It might feel like too much, so don't force it. But if you want to straighten your legs, you might straighten one and then the other. We're going to get to something like that in a second. Just give you a moment right here. And then you'll uh, keep the left leg straight if it's already there. Draw the right knee up towards the chest. And you can interlace your hands either in front of the shin or behind the hamstring. And just maybe moving that leg side to side or rotating the ankle in some circles or the knee in some circles. Hold on to the knee and just the right hand, take it over to the right. Be a tiny bit or it can be a lot. And you have to really kind of keep that left hip heavy on the block so you're not tipping off of it or on the roll. And I want you to feel that opening in the left leg. Press out through the left heel, let it be heavy and connected to the ground. And stay here for a little moment to get that release through that left hip. And there's a compression in the right. There's a squeeze happening, which also serves a wonderful for a release in a moment. We'll bring it back to the center line. Hold the knee in the left hand. It's you're not doing a big twist, just a gentle movement of the knee to the left. And you can even press your right hand into the right hip crease and press it down so it stays on the block.
Bring it back to center. Give it another little squeeze right here. Interlace your hands now behind the right hamstring. Just straighten the right leg up to the ceiling. Press the heel away from you and then point the toe. Flex the foot. Point and flex and point. And then flex the foot, bend the knee. Point the toe, straighten the leg. Flex the foot, bend the knee. Point in the toe, straighten the leg. One more time, flex and bend, point and straighten. And then set the left foot flat to the floor. Cross the right ankle above the left thigh. So we're gonna stay here in this pigeon variation. Just pause right there. With your right hand, press into the top of the right thigh and gently traction it away from you. So there's a tractioning in the hips. And set the right foot down for a moment. Take the block or roll out from under the pelvis. Lower the pelvis down to the mat. And you can windshield wipe the knees side to side or let the knees support each other at the midline called constructive rest or hug the knees into the chest and take a rock. Set the feet back down flat to the floor. When you're ready, you'll slide the block or roll back under the hips. And you can do this without that also. And then straighten the right leg out long, right heel heavy. Draw the left knee in. You can interlace your hands behind the hamstring if that's better on the knee or in front of the shin. And just start with some ankle rolls, little small movement. Maybe moving that left leg right to left or in a little circle. And the right leg can be extended or put flat if that, you need that support. It's really up to you. And you'll take hold of the left leg in the left hand and bring it to the left, whatever degree you can. Right hip heavy. Press out through the right heel. Breathing. You don't even, you can even not hold the left leg if you want to work from some deeper muscles. You don't have to hold it. Bring it back to center, and then you'll switch hands and take it a little bit to the right. With your left thumb, press into the left hip crease, press it forward and down if you're able to do that. Or just energetically press that left hip forward and down. So you're feeling into the IT band a little bit, outer hip a little. Then bring it back to center line. Bend the right knee so the foot's flat. Cross the left ankle. Oh, wait, sorry. Interlace your hands behind the thigh first and point, straighten and bend the left leg a couple times. Straighten and bend. And then straighten and hold. See if you can point and flex the foot. And then you'll flex the foot, bend the knee, point the toe, straighten the leg. Flex the foot, bend the knee, bend and flex, straighten and point. Bend and flex, straighten and point. Good, and then bend and draw the knee in, cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Use your right, a uh, left hand to gently press the left thigh away from you or down, opening up the front of the hip. You might have a little slack through the uh, hip rotators, the piriformis and the glute muscles. You might feel those too, that's good. Right, 
set the left foot down, and then gently lift the hips, take the block out from underneath you, take any movement that you want. It can be a rotation side to side, a windshield wipe, it could be supta bada, feet together, knees apart. Draw the knees into the chest, give a gentle hug, and a happy baby pose, maybe holding the feet. If there's something else that your body wants instead, do that. Now slowly roll your body out and we'll finish with a gentle supine twist. So straighten the left leg out long, hold the right knee in your left hand and cross it over your body for a nice easy twist. And the right arm can go out to the right if that feels okay in your shoulder. back through center and switch legs and you can scoot the hips to the left as the left leg goes to the right extend the left arm out to wherever it wants to be eyes can be open or closed so if the eyes are open try to let them just rest like find a spot soften your gaze it's like you kind of see shapes and colors but it's not, a, not an analyzing stare. You're not looking to understand. You're just getting oriented in the space, feeling into your body. And then slowly come back to center and then make your way into Shavasana. So if there's anything your body needs before you can rest, do that. Sometimes it's just like tensing and relaxing muscles or moving in and out. I love that with the legs, Karen, that feels so good, or wiggling around. And then you want to find a place of stillness. through your physical body as you lie here looking for areas that are still tense or holding on see if you can relax and let go
just begin to bring your awareness back to your breath, your physical body. You can move your fingers and toes or stretch in any way your body wants. You'll gently bend your knees, roll to a comfortable side, and press yourself up to seated. You arrive in a seated posture. Close your eyes for a moment. Now, whatever's comfortable, if the legs need to be extended, totally fine. Bring your palms together and touch in at your heart. And lift your thumbs to your forehead. I hope you have a beautiful day. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you at home. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope that helps. Oh, yes. I keep taking care of yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We get back to hiking, back to all the things we love. Oh, and I cycle in the world. Yeah, it's okay because I'm cleated in, but it's still pushing it in. Right, it's good for it, isn't it? Um, like, yeah, yeah, but it's you know, I'll go out and like 45 miles. Bye bye, thanks. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad your doggies left you alone finally, Darian. <laughs> Yeah, just, they sit on my stomach. They're so funny. I love watching them with you. I wanted to tell you, I'm, I'm feeling the benefits. Oh, good. Yeah, you know when you lace your arms together, they, my shoulders would never go back, and now they, they Look do. It. And also, all that vinyasa, which I hated, um, I'm noticing this, this that I hate is tightening. Toning up. Toning up. I never thought it would. I mean, not that it's... But it's good now. Good. I love that. That yeah. feels so good. Good. Well, you're doing all the work. You keep yeah, showing up, even though it's hard and painful. You're doing well, this it. This is one thing I wouldn't give up. I'd give up the fitness class. Or, but I, this I, I, I really think is helping. Good. I'm so glad. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye.